said, let me thank every one of you who have assembled here. Today marks our first HR conclave and we are proud to be able to host it today here at this wonderful place for all of you. At the outset, let me also acknowledge some of the people. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all those who have generously helped us to make this event come together to become a grand success, which of course includes the CIMSME and Mahindra World City team, placement officers from various colleges, partners, eminent speakers and well-wishers. Ms. Umar Rao of Ashok Leyland, Mr. Balaganesh of Sunwise Synergy Holdings, Ms. Bharati, the CFO of Mahindra World City for their encouragement and support, and not to forget Dr. Sandhya and Divya of CIMSME. Technology partner ICT MAE and co-partner IBM and Egypt SPLA group of institutions. Gift partner BSA Crescent Institute of Science and Technology and Cobbler's Calf team. Shuttle Cars India Private Limited. Web media partner Global CXOS. And let me tell you friends, this could not have been possible without all of those present. Can you have a round of applause for all those who have made this coming possible? Now the main purpose of the event, as you all may know, in today's gathering, we will have thoughts and exchange experiences and knowledge about the rapidly changing trends in skill and human resource industry. Human resources industry has evolved greatly when it comes to technology and trends. The role of HR has been transformed from merely managing employee data to a strategic partner in business decision making. This transformation has brought a set of new challenges and solutions for the industry leaders and technology innovators. You have all been chosen to be a part of a conclave due to a mutual passion for HR capital. Your passions help us to all unite together and the energy we create in what is what allows us to achieve our individual as well as community or foreign goals. During the next few hours, you will be learning about the different trends and challenges in HR domain. I hope this will help you grow to be more productive and smart. Well, I don't want to take more of your time. Today is going to be a fun and full of learning, friends. So a very warm welcome once again to each and every one of you present here. I also thank you for listening thus far and also welcome our chief guest of the day, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, the founder and chancellor of VIT Velo. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's start off by inviting some of the eminent uh, people here today to the dais, after which we'll have the lighting of the lamp. May I invite our chief guest and keynote speaker, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, founder and chancellor of the VIT University, please. Mr. Sundaram Srinivasan, Managing Director, South Asia Lincoln Electric Committee. Mr. Natwal Kadil, Department Head, Employee Relations at Hyundai Motor India, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Dr. Emma Ravikumar, Principal of the Kingston Engineering College, Vellore. Welcome, to you, sir. Mr. Raveen Prasoon, Head of Talent and Training at Renault Nissan Technology and Business Center, India, Chennai. Renault, yes. <laughs> Mr. Instead of Mr. Rakesh Ramachandran, he has not been able to come today. We invite Mr. Vijay Kumar Krishnan, the sales head of Corporate Mobility Solutions of Ford. I guess. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Mr. R. Mohan Kumar, Director of Training and Placement, EGS Play Group of Institutions. <laughs> A round of applause for all those wonderful people sitting up here. Without any further ado, I request uh, all of you standing here to please come over and uh, have the lighting of the lap, please. Seats. We'll have the keynote address by the chief guest as well as to open them. Mm -hmm. 
I now request uh, Chief Guest and Keynote Speaker, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, founder and chancellor of the VIT University, to kindly address the gathering. Good morning. Uh, at the outset, let me thank the organizers of uh, CAMSME for having invited me to be with you this morning. This is the first time I am attending such a HR conclave. This has now become very important for the growth of any industry in our country. And I find a number of topics you have chosen to be discussed today, which includes uh, women empowerment, talent acquisition, leadership training, etc. We have a growing economy, and um, among the big countries, one of the fastest growing economies in the world. But the whatever growth has taken place in the last 25 or 30 years after the introduction of the new economic policy in 1991. No doubt, compared to previous years, our growth rate has gone up because until 1991, it used to be three to four percent, what they used to call us Hindu rate of growth. The ones under Narsimha or Manmohan Singh combination, the new economic policy was introduced and that was growth started going up from five, six, seven, when it beyond seven, eight percent. But uh, when you compare the population of our country, and the industrial production, etc. It is far from satisfactory. We are now grown to sixth largest economy of the world, overtaking France. But their population is all very small compared to ours. But being under the British for a long time, and the foreign yoke. We started growing very slowly, and especially in the first 30, 40 years, we couldn't grow much. But what is it that we are going to do? What is our aspiration? Where do we want to go? And uh, what is going to be the role of HR in the growth of industries, industrialization, or uh, economic growth? Being a student of economics, I'm always concerned about the comparative growth of the world countries. The first thing I would like is that both men and women should participate in the labor force. At present, the participation of women is very, very low in our country. 70% of women participate in the US and Japan, whereas it is 27% in India. If we want to become an advanced country, we want to compare ourselves with the growing nations, they should also start working. They should be given enough opportunity. The first and foremost thing is giving education. As a nation, we are lagging behind in education, particularly in higher education, because our grass and road ratio is only 25 percent, whereas it varies from 50 percent to 100 percent in the advanced countries. And among these 25, ladies are still lagging behind. In fact, I am the president of a society called the Education Promotion Society of India, through which we have made an appeal to all the recognize political parties because registered parties are very many in this country, more than 2,000. So we have sent our appeal to the 58 state parties and seven area parties to include in their manifestos the, about the importance of education. One is the 6% of the GDP is a minimum to be spent on education. Second thing is what we have provided Free and compulsory education is only up to the age of 14. 
Devasa civilization to the age of 18, so that at least 12th standard could be covered. The third important thing is there are more than 40 countries in the world who offer higher education free to all their children. We are not offering anything in the higher education except some uh, scholarships for SCSD, Muslim, women, etc. We want a national level scholarship scheme or like the 40 countries we must offer free education at the higher level also. If it is immediately not possible, we have suggested that women should be given priority in higher education, free higher education, and the latter one can be extended to boys also. I don't know how many of them, I think I, one party has accepted partially, the other parties are keeping silent. We would like to press it when the new government is formed. That unless quality education is given and an opportunity to work, we cannot come up. The Prime Minister has been talking about Make in India for the last five years. It has remained a slogan because the central government and the state governments have not got started manufacturing. Still, we are interest is in imports. Our import bills goes to the almost three lakhs crores a year. In fact, many of them could be manufactured here itself. And uh, I would like you to take up this very, very important subject that why cannot we manufacture all those things which are importing from other countries. So for something is not possible to manufacture here, then by the, those companies they can locate it here, we are not going to be manufactured by Indians. And um, the growth rate represents about 6% to 7%. There is a good growth rate. But um, being with a population of 1.36 billion, the latest population is 136 crores. When you take as an economy, macro level, we are happy that, that we are in the sixth place of the world. But what happens if you compare the per capita income? Because we always um, compare ourselves to the per capita income when you want to find out how the people are living. Our per capita income is $2,200. In overall economy, we are sixth rank, but if you compare the per capita income, we are somewhere 140 or so. And uh, we have to go a long way. There are 72 countries in the world whose per capita income is more than 10,000. Normally, we say the per capita income is more, more than 10,000. We call them an advanced country or an advanced economy. We can aim at it because a country, our neighbor, is the only one who can comparable to us in population is China. They are about six, seven crores more than us. They have crossed $10,000 this year. Of course, they started the new economic policy like us in the 70s. We started in the 90s, about 10 years before us. But because of the discipline, they are able to achieve things. No doubt we enjoy our democracy. Of course, I was part of the parliament, assembly, cabinet, etc. But we feel that democracy means I can do whatever I want. And I can go on strike at any time I like. Indiscipline is not democracy. Democracy gives autonomy with accountability in a citizen. And the best example is Germany. Uh, I'm an admirer of that country. I often go there whenever I possible. Because I feel that's the first country which introduced practical knowledge to the students. Because we are always good in theory, but lagging behind in practice. That's what we are trying to change in BIT. Not only satisfied with the partners outside the country, university partners, we want industrial partners. So that both our teachers and students will have enough practical knowledge 
in Germany, if he wants to be a person wants to be a professor, promoted as a professor, he must have spent at least five years in the industry, only then he will be promoted. That's the practical training they give. And you will find, I have never heard of a strike in Germany normally, because it's a country devoted to work. Of course, Japan is the other one. Japan and South Korea, I mean the, uh, if you want to compare our Asian neighbors, it's the, these two countries, Japan and South Korea. About 50, 60 years ago, they were on par with us. But now Japan has crossed $40,000, Korea has crossed $32,000. It's because they concentrated on education and the industrialization. Now time has come that we should also aim at it and achieve. And the fruits of labor should reach all, which is not being done in India. Whatever growth takes place, it goes to only one segment of the society. The economic inequality in the world, we are one of the highest. I don't know how many of you have read that. One person, the top 1% 1 of the population own or control 73% wealth of this country. This is not normal. This is a very abnormal situation. Mainly because of education and awareness. In fact, I am talking to some of the political leaders. I ask them whether they know about it. They say, we know, but we can't talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. We are creating seven billionaires in a year. Now the number has crossed 100. Ultimately, they will control the government. Because the parties control the government. And as financiers, they will control the parties. Indirectly, they will control the government. That's what's going to happen. Unless all of us are aware of our weaknesses, all of us get enough education and an opportunity to work. And uh, make in India should become a reality. We should be able to make everything. We can many of them. Tamil Nadu is one of those who are doing very well long back and now we have gone behind. A year back I found that the growth rate of industry was less than 2% in Tamil Nadu, whereas 7% in Telangana and 10% in Andhra Pradesh. There was, I don't know if the delegates from those states also here. Are they here or only Tamil Nadu? From? Telangana. You must be happy. <laughs> No, I, I want us to compete, all the states to compete, because we have various, it's a federal country and we have given powers to the state governments also, even though ultimately the power lies in the Delhi central government. But they have their own the possibilities of growing. And I want everybody to do their bit and uh, then I want the HR can make a difference, because in training and uh, skill development, you can make a difference. And you can compare ourselves, our own officers and workers with other countries, what is that we are lagging behind, what kind of training is necessary for them. Uh, these things HR can make and ultimately we should be able to compete with advanced countries. And uh, that's what I wanted to convey today. I'm happy that the uh, conclave is going to take day, we're going to discuss all important subjects today including women empowerment, as I told you, we are very much behind in this. Our uh, bill was introduced in 1996, giving one-third of uh, legislature and parliament seats to women. Now it is 22 years. All the major parties say we are fine, but it's never been passed. It was passed in Rajya Sabha. It was sent to Lok Sabha, but it was just pending and got lapsed in 2014. Now it is five years, nobody has talked about it. We always talk about it outside, but not in Parliament. We have only 7% of women in Tamil Nadu Assembly. Fortunately, Parliament is better. In Lok Sabha, it is, uh, Rajya Sabha, it is 11%, Lok Sabha, it is 12%. In judiciary, we are very much behind, it's only about less than 10%. There are eight high courts where there are no women judges at all. It's the same on us that they are almost half of the population. 
and we give them 8%, 10%, etc. And we, have, we offered them one third, but you have never got passed. Only in this state, the bill was passed for a chance, the local bodies. So it is high time that they should be given the new share so that they will also contribute and as a country we can come up. I would like to thank the organizers for having given me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, for touching up on some very, very key points, and I'm sure it's raised quite a few eyebrows in the audience today. The next speaker for the day would be Mr. Vijay Kumar Krishnan, Sales Head of Corporate Mobility Solutions. Yes? Yeah, okay, fine. Fair enough. Okay, and therefore we have now then uh, Mr. Mohan Kumar, Director Training and Placement, EGS Pillai Group of Institutions. Can I have you please? Very happy morning to Onagal Prison here, our respected uh, guests, uh, delegates on the stage, and uh, Hacha speakers, uh, academicians, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's uh, my great pleasure to stand in front of you in this great Hacha conclave. Uh, I represent uh, EJ's Play Group of Institution, uh, which is located in Nagapatnam. Uh, I think uh, we all know about Nagapatnam. Uh, I, do not, I don't want to talk much about Hacha conclave because I have Theoretically studied only MBA HR, but not that too much into the HR aspects. I just wanted to uh, share some ideas about Nagapatnam because the place where uh, the college is located. So we all know Nagapatnam uh, majorly because of Kaja strike or uh, tsunami, but there is a lot of uh, unknown facts. A lot of unknown facts uh, there about uh, Nagapatnam. Nagapatnam is a symbol of uh, unity and diversity. So that's one thing is uh, really represents Nagapatnam. When you take one corner, it's Balangani, and the other one corner is Nagapur. And you have, it's a temple city, you have Tirunallaru, so all the temples are there. So that's a major thing about Nagapatnam, the beauty of Nagapatnam. And uh, second, uh, it's one of the oldest port in Nagapatnam. Uh, Nagapatnam, the oldest port was around uh, 200 centuries back. Uh, earlier, uh, the two degree, I think we all know that the two degree port, earlier it was in Nagapatnam. It was moved to Tutukuri. So, and uh, another one thing is that uh, due to the Dutch, in, uh, during the Dutch period, uh, Nagapatnam was uh, trading point, important trading point in uh, during the Solar Dynasty also. Nagapatnam is the important trading point. So, these are the things like uh, it has gone uh, due to the unorganized uh, policies, and uh, Nagapatnam lacked the exposes. So, now Nagapatnam is only spread because of the Kaja cyclone or the tsunami. Whenever the cyclone happens, Nagapatnam represents more. So the people uh, now concentrate only on the fisheries sites. So fisheries, uh, normally Tamil Nadu, it around 30 to 40 percentage of fisheries productions in Nagapatnam. So I request this Hacha can play uh, the Hachas uh, to give an exposure uh, about Nagapatnam people, about what is the industries, because there is not that much industries in the Nagapatnam. I request these people, uh, these Hachas, visit Nagapatnam and uh, make uh, Nagapatnam is one of the industry revolutionary area. That's one point I would like to stress in this uh, Hacha conclave. And second, uh, just I'd like to say about our college, uh, EG Spillay Engineering College is an autonomous college. It's accredited by MBA and it's accredited by uh, NAC and also it's an uh, autonomous college, as I already mentioned. Um, I personally feel uh, about this Hacha conclave, I personally feel that uh, Hachar conclave, the Hachar functions is a very important function of any organization. The trust and transparency. These are the two important clients which uh, derives any Hachar functions. The built through uh, trust has to be built through the transparency. Uh, I think this Hachar conclave will uh, give the insight about uh, the Hachar functions, the technology and the analytics. So it should be a great day for us and I wish you a grand success of the event. And I thank uh, CMASME for giving this great opportunity to share our ideas from our now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mohan uh, Kamal sir. I now request uh, Dr. Sandhya Rani to kindly hand over a memento to our chief guest and keynote speaker, Dr. J. Vishnal.
Omar Rao, Natwar Kedal, Dr. M. M. Ravi Kumar, and Pranav Prasoon. I request you to kindly stay back and the rest of you may. We will have a panel discussion now. I also request our moderator, Sukirat Sethi, to kindly come over, the founder and BSCRO of Kronheim.